All right, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at get server side props. And we're going to see what's the main difference between get static props as well as get static paths. So if you haven't seen the video where I covered get static paths, definitely go check it out. It's the previous video. OK, but get static paths and get static props. You have to remember the most important thing about these two functions is that they are only called during build time. OK, so when you build your next app for production, OK, what happens is any logic that is going to be executed inside these functions will be executed once during build time. So if you're fetching data from a database, if you're fetching data from an external API, it's going to get that data from the API. OK, and it's going to. So for get static paths, it would generate all of the dynamic routes. OK, and with get static props, it would pretty much just return all the props back to the component. And then the component, you would use it however you want, and it would just populate the data inside the generate HTML, and it would be served to the user um, pretty much as much as, uh, as as many times as the user requests it, and it's always going to be the same content every single time. Okay, so just wanted to give a quick recap of these two functions because it's important that you understand them because in order to understand uh, get server side props, it makes uh, it helps a lot to understand the differences between those functions. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new route just to kind of like clean things up or keep things separate. So I'll create a new route called users. Let me zoom in just a little bit just so you all can see my screen. Let me close this file. So inside users folder, I'll create a new file called index.tsx. I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called user page. And I'll type annotate it with the next page um, type. And then this is just going to be an arrow function. And it's just going to be a regular function component. So we can return whatever we want. I'll just return a div that just says user page. And remember, we have to make sure this is a default export. So we have to add export default and then the name of our variable, our component variable, which is user page. So now if I go to localhost port 3000 slash users, I will be able to see the user page. All right, cool. So Let's say, for example, this user page has a lot of dynamic data. Let's say you want to make sure you're getting the latest uh, updated uh, user's details. Let's say if you're logged in and you want to be able to see the latest uh, username, the latest email address that you updated to, you recently changed the first name or last name, you want to see those latest changes as well. Let's say if there's other dynamic data. And what I mean by dynamic data is data that can change over time. Okay. And... Um, so, so, for example, if you're building an application that has just lots of data that can be altered using CRUD functionality, so maybe users might create um, a lot of transactions, they might create invoices, uh, they might need to delete some invoices, right? You want to make sure that as that data is being altered, right, via the database, you want to make sure that it's being served back to the user, like the latest version of that data, right? So... It would make sense to use server-side rendering for that using Next.js's uh, uh, get server-side props function because, well, if you were to use get static props and get static paths, well, remember that that function during production is only going to be called once, right? And if you update anything with, let's say, for example, an invoice or a user detail type, it's not going to, those changes will not reflect until you actually build the uh, the whole Next.js app again for production. Now there is something called uh, incremental uh, static site generation, which we're not going to talk about in this video at least, but we'll probably talk about that maybe later on. It's a more advanced concept, but it's just a way where you can uh, pretty much uh, rebuild the entire project based off of uh, I think using webhooks. But again, we're not going to we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so let's go back to the main focus with get server side props. So we're going to go ahead and export an asynchronous function called get server side props, just like this. Okay, so a couple things to mention is that when you use get server side props in a component, you cannot use that with get static props or get static paths. Okay, so if you use get static props or get static paths, for example, inside blogs uh, id.tsx, we're using both get static props or get static paths, right? If you use at least one of these, you cannot use get server side props because it doesn't make sense, right? You're trying to do static site generation as well as server side rendering on the same page. It doesn't really make much sense. So you can only have one or the other. So if you want get server side props, you cannot use get static props or get static paths or both of them. Okay, and vice versa. So let's go ahead 
And this function is going to take in one argument or one parameter, and it's called context. And let me type annotate this as get server side props context. And this basically gives you a lot of information. So we can go ahead and just console log the context. Okay, and you can see a lot of information. You can get like the request object, the response object. You can get the query, route parameters, the local, if you're doing localization, um, and a bunch of stuff. So I'll just console log that. And this function similar to get static props needs to return an object that has the props that has that has a props property. Okay, so again, similar to get static props, right? Um, the component now will be able to receive whatever props that we are returning from this function. Okay, so you got to determine, okay, what is our page doing, right? What props does this user page need in order to pre-render the page, pre-render the HTML properly? Okay, so for example, what I'll do is um, I'll just return some basic stuff. So let's just say, for example, get server side props is going to return, let's say, user. So I'll just create a custom type right now, user type. And I'll just do ID, number, username, string, just something basic for now. Okay. And let's just say this page, all it's going to do is return um, the authenticated user. Okay, so we would have to somehow ma magically fetch that, fetch that. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and just send back a hard coded value just to show you how exactly this works. Okay, so for return props, um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn an ID of one username Anson. Okay, and this could obviously, again, this could be any piece of information that is of user type. Okay, so for example, you'd fetch the data from a database, for example, like MongoDB, and then you would send it back as props. Okay, that's literally all we're doing. So now I can go ahead and destructure. Uh, well, let me actually send this back as, let me send this as an individual user, like this. Okay, so now I can destructure, uh, wait, whoops. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, let me change this to props. There we go. That's a lot better. All right. So type annotate this. Okay. And there you can see that get server side props also has the IntelliSense already reflecting. So it knows you can see over here, it returns a promise with props, user ID, username. So let's go ahead and destructure user. And what I'll do is right underneath this user page, I'll just go ahead and just, uh, let's see, we'll interpolate user ID and it will interpolate the username and now if i go i'm gonna I go into our, our app you're gonna see that it says can i read properties of undefined reading id so let's see what is the problem here um let's see okay yeah i don't know what just happened but i refreshed the page and it seemed to work um but yeah that, yeah i don't know why that would fail but okay but there you go it works fine so now when i refresh the page you can see that Unlike with React, when we use the use effect hook to fetch like data, for example, it takes like you know a second or more to fetch the data and use client side JavaScript to populate our or, or, or to generate the HTML nodes, right? Well, with server side rendering, all of it already is rendered on the server side and it's just sent back as an HTML document to the actual user. Okay, so you can see when I refresh, it literally is just there. Like it, there's no like you know split second where it just magically appears, right? So it just literally loads. All right, so that's pretty much get server side props. So again, you could literally call any API you want. You can even just call the same blog post API or the same uh, JSON web server API, get those posts, and you can just use server side rendering if you don't want to use static site generation. Okay, so this is just a simple example, but uh, don't worry. Um, we're gonna go ahead and set up some other stuff later on. Like we're gonna set up a database and I'm going to show you uh, what actually is going to happen when we have actual dynamic data that we can alter locally, right? Because we can't really change the data on the JSON uh, web server right now. I think you can, but I'm not sure. They, I know they, I know they did mention it somewhere, but we'll, we'll use our own database because I want to show you how to connect to uh, MongoDB or MySQL. So we'll do that, and then we'll have some dynamic data. We'll alter it, 
and then when we run our app in production using static site using static site generation from for some parts of our app you'll see that the data will not update okay um, so that's going to be pretty much it for get server side props and server side rendering so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next episode peace out